in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. For he is the merciful lamb that was slain for you to take away your sin. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I'm so happy that my viewing audience are staying tuned with these programs and learning the Word of God. And if you are watching this program for your very first time today, just keep that channel open and be blessed by the ministry of God's Word. I'd like to pray for you this morning. Lord, I ask that you would pour out your Spirit upon those that are watching, Lord, that you'll open their heart, open their eyes and their ears to understand who you are, Lord, that you would move in their lives and, and heal them and touch them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. We've been teaching out of Isaiah 57, 15 and Isaiah 53. And we are going to continue along those lines of reviving the heart of the humble. Now, if you are watching for your very first time today, I am so glad that you are watching this program. Out of Isaiah 57, the prophet begins to prophesy. Verse 15, he says, For thus saith the high and the lofty one, that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I will dwell in the high and holy place. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. You know, David the psalmist, he was a prophet and a priest and a king. And he came to himself before the Lord and he began to acknowledge his iniquity before God. He acknowledged his transgression before the Lord. He began to say, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Ghost from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. He began to prophesy, David, and he said, Where will a man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God. See, God's word is exalted above his name. He watches over his word to perform it. In, in the book of Isaiah 55, it states in verse 10, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth and bringeth it forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. See, Jesus is the seed of Abraham. When God spoke to Abraham, Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. He was before Abraham. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So when the prophet was prophesying, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. Jesus came down to the earth to accomplish what no one could accomplish because he was sent from God. 
He was sent into the world, born under, born by a virgin, under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, to fulfill all righteous requirements of the law and of the prophets, and to redeem mankind by giving his life a holy sacrifice upon the cross. There's only one sacrifice that's acceptable before God. There's only one offering that is acceptable before God, and that is Jesus Christ the Lord. He said, My Father gave me a commandment to lay my body down and to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. He offered himself up to God for the iniquity of us all and the transgression of us all to remit our sin and declare his righteousness that he is a justifier of the unjust. Jesus is the one that imparts righteousness. Jesus is the one that imparts his, the grace of God. Jesus is the one that imparts the promise of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And he is the one that imparts his peace. He said, the peace that I give you, no man can give you. The joy that I give you, no man can give you. What Christ imparts into your heart by faith in him and him alone. See, faith is not in any person but the person of Jesus Christ. All the gods of this world and the gods of the nations are all idols. There's only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus the Lord. The Father highly exalted Jesus Christ at the right hand. He bodily is at the right hand of the Father. And all power has been given unto him in the heavens and the earth. Jesus came to destroy the old man, the Adam's transgression. He, he destroyed the old man to bring in the new man. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Your heart is changed. Once it was darkened and you were alienated from the life of God, you were under the prince and the power of the air. But when you come fully to Christ and repent before God and acknowledge Jesus Christ truly took away my sins, he is the Savior of the world. He justified me in his own blood and imparted his righteousness to me. The Bible says that Jesus bore in himself our iniquity and transgression. And he forgave us of our sins. But sins that are not acknowledged, you cannot receive forgiveness by not acknowledging it. That's why he specifically told his apostles and disciples, those that are true followers, to preach repentance and remission of sin to all the nations of the world. Then shall the end come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all nations, then shall the end come. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Why? Because he came forth from the Father into this world and he paid the ultimate penalty for sin and judgment at the cross to deliver you from the wrath to come, to, to bring you into fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that you become a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ, you become an heir of the Father and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, you become... Uh, his child, you're bought with the precious blood of Jesus. You become his child by faith in Christ. The word faith in the, in the Greek 
translations means reliance upon Christ and the truthfulness of God. Jesus is the truth. The Bible says that when you continue in his truth, a true follower of his word, true follower of Jesus Christ, the truth will make you free. A lot of people say, well, Jesus was only a prophet. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. If you go to John, let's go to the book of John. John chapter 5, verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father which hath sent him. Verse 24. Verily, verily. I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now if you go to 1 John 2.23... First John 2.23 Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. Verse 24 of 1 John 2. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. It says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. That's talking to the believer. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. See, in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, the Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God, even those that believe on his name. Verse 2 of 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgress also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse, 4, uh, verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil was sin and death, sickness and disease and oppression. 
Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. See, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And when he was in his earthly ministry upon the earth, anointed by the Father of glory with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God was with him in the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was empowered by his heavenly Father to do the works of his Father upon the earth, healing people of disease, casting devils out by his word. Even the devils acknowledged that Jesus is the Son of God. They begin to acknowledge he is the Son of God out of people's mouth. People were demon uh, possess spirit, soul, and body. And when Jesus would come into a synagogue or if he would come ministering, the devils would cry out of people and say, why are you coming to tor torment us before our time? We know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. They begin to acknowledge it. The Bible says the devil trembles at the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the Father highly exalted Jesus, given him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows in heaven. Every knee will bow upon the earth, and every knee will bow under the earth and declare Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, Jesus came to impart into you that believe the free gift of grace. That grace is God's divine ability, his divine favor. You could not merit eternal life. You could not save your soul by all the good deeds that you did. There's nothing that you can do to save yourself. Jesus said, except you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. He said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father and his holy angels. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father and his holy angels. So Jesus came to save you, to deliver you, and to resurrect your body from the grave as a believer. That your body will take on, once it's in the grave, it's corruptible, it'll take on incorruption. And the mortal shall take on immortality. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. You shall not all sleep, but you shall be changed and a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That word sleep means we shall not all be uh, physically dead, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump sh trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ 
shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus said, this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. The victory has been won 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, it was won at the cross and the power of his resurrection. That's why God is calling all nations under heaven, all peoples of the earth, to repent before God and put their faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. There's only one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus the Lord. The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And John 1.15, or 1.14, let's go there. John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh. The Word was God. God was made flesh. He was born of a virgin. He was born under the law to redeem those that were under the law. And the Bible says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. The law gave a knowledge of sin. But it was all pointing to Christ. Jesus came to fulfill all the law. Everything that the prophets had spoken under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Jesus came to fulfill. He had to open up the scriptures even after his resurrection to his apostles and disciples. If we go back to Matthew, he had to open up all the scriptures to them and show them through scriptures all the law and the prophets. And they were pricked in their heart. They were pricked in their heart. And Jesus told his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. See, when the Lord comes back, He's coming back with a shout of an archangel and the trump of God. The graves of those that have our believers will be opened up and their bodies will be changed. They'll take on incorruption. Believers on the earth that are true followers of Jesus Christ will be caught up together with the Lord in a twinkling of an eye. And they will be changed. See, upon the earth right now is darkness. Darkness. People are under the prince and the power of the air, believing in false gods, bowing down to false gods, False gods that cannot save. There's only one God. One mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus the Lord. That's why the Bible says he will revive the heart of the humble. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The humble begins to acknowledge the truth 
that Jesus Christ is the Lord. The Bible says in, in uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 34, 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as of a contrite spirit. When God begins to revive your heart, he begins to restore your heart. He gives you a brand new heart where he can write his word upon the tablets of your heart. You become his child by faith in Jesus Christ. The word revive in the original Hebrew means to give promise, to give life, to nourish and preserve alive, to recover, repair, and restore, to restore life, to be made whole. God takes a heart that was totally shattered in pieces and he brings wholeness into your life. He brings sobriety into your life. He brings stability into your heart. He brings stability into your mind. Uh, God imparts his reform into your heart. He puts everything that was out of order in your life in order because the seed of God gets planted into your, into your heart. You're born again of the incorruptible word of God that lives and abides forever. You're born of his spirit. The spirit of the living God comes into your heart. The spirit of Christ enters your heart by the Holy Spirit. You are born again. You acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that God the Father raised him from the dead to justify you, that you have faith in Jesus Christ. You're justified by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave his life for you. He begins to heal you from the inside out. The word of God begins to penetrate your heart and penetrate your soul and penetrate your mind that it gets into your blood and gets into your bones and your body begins to get healed and restored by the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your day to receive a great refreshing of Jesus Christ into your heart by opening your heart to him and giving him your heart and life and being a true follower of Jesus Christ. God bless you for watching Times of Refreshing. Thank you for watching. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.